Stop second-guessing yourself, Max. Put this on and let your inner punk rock girl come out. You can afford to take chances whenever and whatever you want to try. For example, I dare you to kiss me. What? I double dare you. Kiss me now. Hello, and welcome back to Life is Strange. I, uh, I just wanted to do this again. Damn, you're hardcore, Max. Now I can text Warren and tell him he doesn't stand a chance. Unless he's into girl-on-girl action. You're such a dork. Oh man, that was priceless when I kissed Chloe. She didn't think I would. So now that we've uh, gotten a relive that, let's try uh, let's try on some of Rachel's clothes here. Looking sick, Max. A couple tats, some piercings, and we'll make a thrasher out of you yet. Ready for the mosh pit, Shaka bra. Maybe not. Go on down and say hi to Joyce. Free breakfast? I have to, uh, wake and bake first. I promise not to tell. Let's not rewind and find out, okay? So yeah, let's, uh, let's go get some of Joyce's breakfast. Oh my god, that smells so amazing. It's like when we were kids here. And Kate is okay. It's really nice to get a message from her. She's in the hospital, but she's still alive. She's doing all right. Actually, before we go down for breakfast, let's see if we can't freshen up a little bit in here. In this bathroom with... No toilet paper whatsoever. Huh. No way. That's the bluebird I saved Monday in Joyce's room. He's still doing pretty good, too. That's weird. But uh, there are a couple ways we can freshen up. Can wash Max's face. Feels so good to wash my face after all that chlorine. And hiding. Chloe never used to care when I borrowed her toothbrush. And hopefully that's still the case. What's ironic is I always hated it when Chloe used my toothbrush. Well, now that we're a little bit less gross, she looks pretty good in Rachel's clothes. Check out Mad Max. <laughs> Ready to fucking thrash. I'm so hardcore. Let's take a fucking hardcore photo, Max. Let's do it. Shit, yeah. Thrashing already. Alright, I think we're ready for breakfast now, so let's pop downstairs. Joyce is in the kitchen cooking, but there's something of interest right here. David, this is Officer Corn. Just want to let you know your stepdaughter's car was identified near the Blackwell campus last night, around the time of the break-ins. What? Give me a call <sighs> soon. Are you in trouble again, Chloe? Don't you sleep? Let's, uh... Let's rewind to before Joyce heard that. Sorry, Officer Corn. Message deleted. Goodbye, message. I think Chloe has earned a break from all this bullshit. Officer Corn, Officer Corn. But there's another bird in the house. Bird, be gone. Fly, you fool. And. This time, uh, we can actually get him back outside. We just have to make a way for him to get back out. And an open window should do it. I keep expecting to see the sky turn red. Now let's just scoot this little baby out the window. (coughs) 
so that ladder shot was framed so that we could see the bird landing on the fence out there. Out in the yard. Three dead birds lined up? That's fucking ominous. And it's not just three dead birds. The yard is actually full of dead birds. For some reason. Uh, there is one alive bird, though. And he's a photo. There we go. Who drinks beer this early around here? Oh man, I don't want to be famous for this. So the first time I heard Max say that line, I assumed she was talking about the apocalypse. However, I think maybe she's talking about this little story down here about Kate. Um, I'm not sure, though. I think we're ready to talk to Joyce now, though. Good morning, Joyce. Rachel. Uh, uh, I mean, Max. Oh, you startled me. Well, you fit those clothes well. Thank God you're not a hellraiser like her or Chloe. Now tell me exactly what you want to chow on. And since this was put to vote in our last episode, a whole bunch of you really wanted some pancakes. I'm dying for some of your famous pancakes. I thought you would have missed those. Ah, you ate more than William, and he loved them. <laughs> I remember. We would race each other to grab them from a stack. So this time, you can help me with the ingredients. I need you to grab me the eggs and milk. Eggs and milk? No problem. So, this is a little tidbit from the first time I played through the game. This grocery bag used to be uh, out here in the front hallway next to the front door, and it took me like 20 minutes to find it for some reason. The eggs always come first, as Joyce used to say. I guess they moved it, because it was really asinine to have to go in the front hallway for eggs. Now for the mother's milk. Thanks. After all these years and everything that's happened, it's great to see you and Chloe together again. But she hasn't had a good friend since you or Rachel. Oh, those clothes remind me so much of her. Such a sweet girl. I'm just hoping she's living large in L.A. I'd love to think that too, Joyce, but... We are on the same page, Max. I keep hoping that Rachel will show up or even send a message to Chloe from Hollywood. Or wherever she is. Is there any reason that Rachel might be mad at Chloe and left without her? Chloe could piss everybody off but her. They were almost joined at the head. Reminded me of you and Chloe. But Rachel wasn't as grounded as you. I'm grounded? Since when? Maybe that's why Chloe likes Rachel so much. <laughs> Max Caulfield, are you actually jealous of Rachel? Maybe. Rachel was so much cooler than me. <laughs> you think? Then why has Chloe been telling me she wishes she could be more like you over the past five years? Doubt it. Um, did she really? Five years ago feels like a thousand now. And that makes me what, a century old? <laughs> You're only 18, Max. Oh, youth. If only I could go back. It's not all that, Joyce. Voila, a breakfast fit for us queens. And a king. <laughs> Go sit at the table.
Thank you so much, Joyce. I'm never leaving this table. Good. You can clean. You guys did it. You voted for the right option. Now that's what I call pancakes. I'm so proud of you, Thread. What's Joyce doing? Seeing you again ah, made me remember so much. I know these photos don't measure up to your work, Max. My favorite photographers probably take pictures similar to yours. You make David happy, Joyce. He wants us all to be happy, Max. He's just not great at showing it. Uh, I don't think I can rock this outfit like Rachel. You have your own cool style. Wow, sir. I totally remember that day. I'm glad. William took this picture with his instant camera. <laughs> oh, it was the last picture he ever took. He had his car out right after this, and... and... I know, Joyce. I'm sorry. I didn't show you this to be morbid. In fact, I want you to have this. This was when my baby was so full of life and light. She was hopeful, positive, and everything she's not today. And this was the last time I ever saw Chloe truly happy. Did you guys have a bonding session about how fucked up I am? It's not always about you. Chloe, please. It's too early to start picking a fight. Heed instead. Keep the warden busy while you go peek in the garage. Now stop whispering or I'll know you're talking about me. Stop being so nosy, mother. Jeez, I can't do anything around here without everybody getting up in my shit. Oh, no one can even joke with you, Chloe. You fly off the handle like that. Excuse me, I have to use the bathroom. Sure, run off and pee when you should back me up. Now who's being paranoid? Just listen to yourself. Nobody else does. I do need to get into David's computer. He's gotta be hiding shit. So Chloe does an excellent job of distraction. We have as long as we want to peruse this computer. No shit it needs a password. How about step douche? Try again. I need more clues. So now we've got to look around and try to find what might be David's password? Naturally, David would buy a heavy-duty military padlock. I can even see the combination. That might be a useful password. So, pretty much anything with a number on it in this room, Max will write down. Hmm. Maybe this ID number might work. Because who knows what might be a password. Also worth noting is that he's locked his gun rack. Chloe can't get another gun now. Unless she steals it back from Frank. Though one has to question why he didn't have it locked in the first place. Looks like David has read this a lot. What did he learn? Yeah, this book is dog-eared to hell. He must be having a really hard time reintegrating into civilian society. And with all of our symbolism we've been having, with deer and does, this is a little creepy. David has been dragging this head around since 2001? It's a little weird. Obviously, David's parents care about him. That date might be a good password.
Cute. Can't picture David driving Joyce around with this on the car. However, oh my. Even David Madsen might be an angel to somebody else. This was a lot less dark than I was expecting it to be. All right. But we can see that the car David was building is finished. Now the car looks ready to roll. This is a better hobby for David than surveillance. And if you missed it there, his license plate is True Detective, which is kind of funny. Under his sun visor... Joyce might as well have wrote, let's get married. Is this cute note from Joyce on the day that they met? That might be a useful password. She's referring to the date here, 112708, the day that David met Joyce. And using my superpower, aka I've played the game before several times, I know that that is the correct password. So we actually, you can see there's multiple categories here, and every one that Max has found will show up under a category, so you can try a lot of them. However, I'm just, I'm just going to put the right one in. Score! Max the Hacker strikes again. Whoa, spoiler alert. Rachel definitely hooked up with Frank. But why does David care? We can see in this description that uh, Rachel hanging out with Frank here with a bag full of illegal pharmaceuticals. Instead of stalking Kate, David could have helped her. She got upset and ran guilty. Good conclusion. This is so wrong. Ugh, creepy bastard. So this is kind of weird. Uh, he's got our school schedule here for some reason. I don't really like that he's got a profile on us. I better tell Chloe about this now. It's just one more thing to make her sad. And mad. And just to be extra safe, I'm going to rewind to before we ever touch the computer to relock it. So there's no evidence that we were ever even in here. And we can see Taylor actually being pretty cool. She's offering to style us up for the party on Thursday night. I think that's I think that's tonight. I think today in game is Thursday. Uh, we can take a look at the photos that we've taken. Max's radical punk selfie and this happy little bird who is not dead. And then we've got three more pages of journal, including Max's perspective on her kissing Chloe and this cute selfie of them together in bed and then this page isn't quite done yet but this is a pretty good otter versus sharks drawing I'm pretty sure they would fight in the water even I'm not sure if that would give a benefit to the shark or not but it seems kind of unfair to make the shark go on the land anyway Nice breakfast. David, you, you back already? I have to take a nap after writing up vandalism reports last night. What happened? Some little shit-ass punks broke into the swimming pool. This is what happens at these PC bullshit colleges. Entitled students taking over the campus. Do you know for sure it was Blackwell students? Who else would do it? And I'm gonna bust them. figures you'd be here. Is that your Rachel Amber Halloween costume? You know more about her than me. No. You and Chloe think you know more than anybody. Like all teenagers. Leave Max alone, David. Stop threatening students. He threatens them with surveillance cameras so he can spy on everybody. Like he spies on all of us here. Don't start, Chloe. Not now. Yeah, I'm just always starting shit, right? 
You're a total paranoid, David. Not now, Chloe. You used to call me a loser for getting kicked out of Blackwell. So who's the loser now, David? Who haven't you accused or harassed? Between your investigations into Rachel and Kate, what have you done besides get in trouble? So, here's our decision. And on the surface, this seems like a pretty easy decision. In this argument, do we side with David or side with Chloe? Uh, David is obviously a fucked up creepy dude. And Chloe raised some good points, so let's side with her first to see what happens. You're a bully, David. I saw you harass Kate Marsh when she was going through hell. You could have totally helped her. Everybody at Blackwell is a suspect to you, except for Nathan Prescott. That's why the students and faculty don't like you. You even threatened me. I do respect your service, but you don't respect anybody. Uh, you were smoking pot in Chloe's room. That's illegal. So is spying on people in your family and at your work. Why do you have photos of Kate Marsh and Rachel Amber in your files anyway? What? Is this true, Max? Yes, David. Why do you have these files at all? I find this very disturbing. I do not have to take this kind of interrogation. Not from you punks. Maybe you should calm down. Oh, you're turning on me now, huh? Of course. Women always stick together. Well, screw you. David, you better go to a hotel until we figure this out. You can't kick me out of my own home. It's my home, David. Paid for and in my name. You know the law, right? Oh, I, I thought I knew a lot of things. Like when I'm outflanked. Have a nice day. Chloe, for once, just please shut up. I hope Joyce doesn't hate me for tearing into David. So what might not be obvious here, based on that decision, is uh, we've just broken up their family. Joyce is kicking David out. For good. I don't want to see or hear you again, Max. You've hurt me and my family enough. And I feel like that's something that's very important to realize when making this decision. Max, don't beat yourself up. David earned this all by himself. Understand? Max, that gave me chills. And you better not rewind this one. And while it makes Chloe happy, it may not make Joyce very happy at all. So, now that we've seen what happens when we side with Chloe, and it essentially breaks up their family, we should see what happens when we side with David. And I think it's worth noting, Max's response here is kind of weird, especially if you pick this one first, it doesn't seem to make sense. But I feel like in the context of she's seen what happens when she chooses the other path, this this response is more coherent. Listen, we don't know that David did anything and nobody has any proof against him. As far as we know, it's Nathan Prescott who's the real threat so far. I would cut David slack here. Oh, would you? How generous, King Max. So suddenly it doesn't matter how shady David has been acting, or that he keeps all those weird files on your classmates, or how you're always going off on how creepy David Enough. is. Enough! I don't want anybody being accused of anything. There's been too much of that crap going on around here lately, and I don't want it in my home today. Well, I agree with that. Now, if you all don't mind, I'd like to forget about work and sit down and eat some of this incredible grub. I have to take a dump. Are you coming, Max? Maybe I went too easy on David for Joyce's sake. So we can tell by how that de-escalated so quickly that we may have avoided a larger problem here. Thanks again for defending me, Max. But this is my family now. Though it's questionable if we should be defending him at all after what we just saw in the garage. Max, I appreciate you sticking up for David. And our family. Even if Chloe doesn't. And it seems to be a better outcome for Joyce, honestly. Uh, you can tell by the way they're sitting together, their posture. And you should be able to tell by Chloe's posture how she feels about this decision, actually. 
Thanks for letting me down again, Max. Why can't you just rewind so I don't have to see you defending that asshole? So, it's up to you, viewers. Do we uh, defend David and keep the family together? Or do we side with Chloe and make Chloe like us a lot more, but effectively ruin Joyce's relationship with her husband? It's up to you. Please vote in the straw poll in the video description. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.